So, you want to know how to make frosted flakes? Well, this is the wrong video entirely. You should be on flakes.com. Hey guys, we're Methods by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a look at how to uh, learn it. Well, not how to learn. Well, I messed it up, guys. Now it's not going to sound cool in the beginning of the video. When does it ever? Um, we're going to be learning all about interpolation modes today and talking about different... Um, different things you can do with them and the reasons to use the different types of interpolation modes in Blender. So let's go ahead and get started. The, the best example I can give you is uh, this specific thing that I'm thinking of. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to just delete everything because we don't need anything right now. Um, and I'm going to open up I'm going to grab a, uh, a plane. So I'm going to shift A and we're going to add in a plane. I'm not going to like go through all this because this is not what the tutorial is supposed to be about. But um, just for the sake of showing you something, I will go ahead and do something like this. So let's go ahead um, and just inset this. And I want to create like a little um, outline. So you'll see that this, little, this is a little thing here. And we'll use some lamps to light this up. Like I want to have some light go around here. It looks like it's like, you know, traveling light around the edge of the circle. So the, the circle? <gasps> Guys, I need to go back to kindergarten. I don't know, I don't know shapes anymore. Um, we're just going to do this real quick. So, uh, a little bit of roughness. Turn that down. Now, if we go ahead and add in a light on here. Now, basically what interpolation modes are, they're different types of, not different types of animation, but they're different types of modes that the animation will follow. So, the keyframes will follow this type of mode. And so, for instance, if I go ahead and go and drag my put my cursor up in the top left and drag the uh, window into two pieces and then change the left hand side to the graph editor. You can see that if I were to add a keyframe on this uh, lamp, which I'm going to do right now, I'm actually going to change this to 60 frames per second as well in the frame rate right here. 60, there you go. So now if I were to go ahead and add in a keyframe, let's say that I want this lamp to go all the way around the, uh, the, the, the square here. So let's go ahead and hit I to insert a keyframe location. And let's go and maybe like frame 30 and then hit G Z G X and move it over to this edge. Hit I, add in a location keyframe and then do the same thing. So we'll move down here, maybe to frame 80 and then we'll move it all the way down. Hit I, location, same thing over here. You guys get the idea. There you go. Location and then this one up here, right? I, location and finally over here, location. And then that's back to where it started. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and change the actual interpolation mode. Now you can see over here we have all these curves, these Bezier curves. We can manipulate the points and change them and whatnot and this all this cool stuff. We can do one individually by doing like this. Very cool stuff. So the thing we need to do now is we can we can right click this entire menu over here and then it'll bring up this F curve context menu, which is what we need. Um, to be looking at. So we can change the interpolation mode right here. We have three different types. We have constant, linear, and Bezier. Bezier is the one it's on. Linear is completely straight. Like it'll be only straight lines, no curves. And then constant will be like super hard edges. And there is no like diagonal lines at all. You see, there's just like bricks, you know, it looks like staircase. But linear, you can see it goes like this. There's no curves, but it does have um, diagonal lines to get from point A to point B. So we can also change it to, like I said, back to Bezier, and you can see what it looks like. So this is smooth. If we play this animation now and with, on rendered viewport chain, you can see that in my, let me go ahead and turn the background down and then make this a little bit brighter. And then we'll do like this and we'll turn that on. Okay, cool. So now you can see this is what it's going to look like when the lamp moves. Uh, this is, this is, I believe this is curved still. Yes. Hold on, pause. There we go. This is still on Bezier curve. So this is the default. This is the animation. Look at the way the animation goes. Look at how it, how it just, you know, moves around and whatnot. And there you go. So that's basically that. You can see it kind of stops. Like when it gets to all the different keyframes, it kind of slows down when, right before it gets there. And then it stops when it actually hits that keyframe. And then, you know, it keeps going. I'm actually going to extend this um, uh, timeline to 300. And then we'll just uh, scale these to 300. There we go. So you can see when it plays, it kind of gets to one of the keyframes and stops for a second and then goes and then stops and then goes and then stops. And goes. So that's what Be Bezier curves do. It kind of curves it out, makes it a little bit more smooth. It slows the the out and it's, it, you know, slows the in and out so that it, you know, looks nice and smooth. Now, if I go and right click this and change this type to constant, you can see exactly what's going to do here. It's going to basically pop in different locations like that. Looks like it's a low frame rate, but it's not low frame rate. It's literally just popping to the different locations on all the different keyframes, which is kind of crazy. You could use this for some specific things like this would be really, 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 really good 
if you're doing like a Lego animation, if you're doing a stop motion, if you're doing something like that, you want to recreate that kind of look. Um, very, very cool stuff. This I actually used this when I was doing a, um, a little Lego short that I made a long time ago. So very, very cool stuff. But now, the, the, the one that I typically use for motion graphics of this type is going to be uh, linear. So we'll go ahead and right-click right, right -click this and put this to linear. And you can see when we play this now, there's no slowing, there's no stopping. It just goes smooth straight on through, which just looks so buttery and so nice. But now this is not good if you were like necessarily animating a character, um, a 3D character, or even a 2D character really. But it, it just doesn't look the best for that but in this situation it looks amazing it has the hard the hard edges it just goes and it does not stop and that's okay because the animation that we have is a nice smooth circle around this uh square which is nice 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 so let's go ahead and one more time let's go back to bezier and you can see that, like i said it, it just kind of stops and then comes to this this these keyframes and then just kind of slows down now we have other things we have easing and we have dynamic effects now i'm gonna put this back on linear and you can see we have all of these these different easing uh strengths so essentially it's just like if we're using bezier how much of the slow and stop do you really want now you can use these on other things other than other than bezier but let's put it back on bezier for a second and you can see if i put this on uh if i put this on number one it kind of has this little effect it doesn't stop too long right but if i go ahead and put this on circular you can see it kind of it kind of goes, whoop, whoop, you know, kind of, yeah, you see, what you see, it's very subtle, but it's like, it slows down and then jumps to the next place, like that, you know what I'm saying? So, it has this really, really strange curve here, and you can see it over here on, on the left-hand side. You can also change it to cubic, you can change it to, you can change it to all these different uh, types of exponential as well, but you can see we have all these different... Uh, types essentially is what i'm trying to say i'll put this back on linear for now um but yeah and then we also have dynamic effects which the dynamic effects is kind of like putting a filter on something it's uh it makes it so that the end and the start kind of have these different flavors so you can see here we have back which makes it kind of ease in and out so like it it It'll go a little bit back before it finishes, which is nice. And then bounce, obviously, it bounces in elastic and kind of wiggles back and forth and, like, jiggles between the keyframe. So the easiest way to explain it is just to show you. So let's go ahead and back, go back to Bezier and turn the uh, first one to bounce. You can see, look at this. You see the, the way the keyframe looks? It looks like a ball bouncing. So think of, like, a ball bouncing, like, ooh, boom, 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 you know, something like that. So let's go ahead and play this. You can see. That's exactly what it does. So it bounces, which is very, very, very unique and can be very, very good for some specific things that you want to do. I don't, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head right now that you would use this for, but it is very, very cool rather than that. So you don't have to animate this fully. And it's very smooth as well. We can go ahead and turn this to elastic. So it's going to do exactly what you think it's going to do. It's going to like pop there and like, you know, wiggle back and forth, um, which is nice. Now, this is super fast obviously um so we can change it down here as well it's super fast uh, obviously so that wouldn't look too good for this but for other things it might look pretty cool let's go ahead and change the last effect which is back you can see it's kind of going forward a little bit then coming back forward a little bit then coming back which is all with this one is actually really cool and i, I kind of want to use this one more often um because this one really does look good for some specific things like this looks really really nice so it kind of goes forward, comes back a little bit, forward, back a little bit, forward, back a little bit, um, which is really, really cool. So this is literally everything about interpolation uh, that you're going to really need to know. We have a couple other things here. We have handle types. You can change these, but these aren't really uh, interpolation uh, settings. But still, you got these ease in and out, ease, automatic easing, all these things. So if we go ahead, so if we go ahead and change the handle type to free, you can see if I were to grab one of these uh, edges here, I can just move. Actually, wait, pause. Let's turn everything, let's grab everything and turn it back to linear for a second. Now, if I were to grab this, this little, this little corner here, you can see that I can move this around, um, which is basically just moving the keyframe. If you can tell right here, you can see I'm moving the keyframe forward and backwards. If I move it forward and backwards over here, it just moves the keyframe. If I move it up and down, it makes it so that the um, strength of the interpolation is higher. You can see it just zooms off the side there. Um, but yeah, so that's basically that. It's just another way to move these keyframes around over here as well. Um, and slow things down, make them go a little, more, a little bit more speedy. If I want to slow it down, just drag it down. If I want to make it go faster, then just drag it up. So 
Um, you can see there you go. So these are a bunch of things about interpolation here. I hope you learn the differences between the three different types of modes. We also have constant still, like I said before, which is still very, very cool depending on what you're trying to do. So yeah, I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new today at least. I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.